But what they did on the steps of, of the Lincoln Memorial was so stunning. That's why the word militarization is in my letter. It looked, it was scary. Now, my daughter, Alexandra, who is a journalist and a filmmaker, um, many years in the news, I say she crossed over to the other side. Did they say she, did that mean she became a Republican? I said, no, she crossed over to the other side. <laughs> she went into the news business. Um, she was in Lafayette Square on Monday night. And she called me at, after a certain period of time and she said, Mom, you can't even believe what happened here. There was no trouble. It was all peaceful. And then all of a sudden, these people came in and were hit, pushing people and hitting them with batons. And she thought she had tear gas in her eyes because she couldn't, you know, she was incapacitated for a while and she called me after. They're saying now they didn't have tear gas, but they had these pellets that exploded and had the impact of tear gas. Whether that qualifies or not, I don't know. It just enables them to have deniability. But the fact is, they had the impact of tear gas. And they were roughing up people for no reason. And they crossed a threshold with that. And then to make room for whatever was to follow. So I, I think that they made a couple of mistakes in that 24-hour period. While I have great respect for our men and women in uniform, I don't think it was appropriate to have them on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial. I don't think it was appropriate uh, for the people to rough people up in Lafayette Square who were demonstrating peacefully so that the president could come through and do his staged event at St. John's, which was magnificently addressed by the Episcopal Bishop of Washington, of this area, as being inappropriate. And I was very proud of the Catholic Archbishop the next day when the, the president visited uh, the shrine of Pope John Paul, St. Pope John Paul, and he said this. And I think it says, it, it really echoes the words of the Bishop of Washington, but... Um, I don't think I have it. Do I have it? No, I want you to hold on for a second because you have to hear this. <laughs> no, I don't seem to have it. But the, 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 Oh, here we are. Hiding under here. Archbishop Wilton Gregory issued the statement on uh, the president's visit to, to the shrine of St. John Paul II. I find it baffling and reprehensible that any Catholic facility would allow itself to be so egregiously misused and manipulated in a fashion that violates our religious principles, which call on us to defend the rights of all people, even those with whom we may disagree. St. Pope John Paul II was an ardent defender of the rights and dignity of human beings. His legacy bears vivid witness to that truth. He certainly would not condone the use of tear gas and other deterrents to silence, scatter, or intimidate them for a photo opportunity in front of a place of worship and peace. It's a funny thing that the, the White House put out some kind of a statement saying that the president there with the Bible at St. John's was the equivalent of Winston Churchill going to the ruins of London or George W. Bush at 9-11. I rest my case. We do need, um, I, 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 I quoted a classic Ecclesiastes, a time, a time to heal. This is a time to heal. Let's hope that uh, holding that Bible, something by osmosis or something, may have gotten into the president about healing which is Ecclesiastes in the Bible, time to heal. It even says in Ecclesiastes that, do you ever know this? I didn't, and I've read it many times, but in this, uh, uh, in this version it says, a time to embrace and a time not to embrace. <laughs> it must have been foreseeing what we're going through now. But President Obama spoke so beautifully after the murder of Eric Garner. Garner. Right now, unfortunately, we see too many instances where people just do not have confidence that folks are being treated fairly. 
And he says, this is not just a black problem or a brown problem or a Native American. This is an American problem when anybody in the country is not being treated equally under the law. That's a problem. And then President um, George W. George Herbert Walker Bush, the father, he said this after the Rodney King beating. Those terrible scenes stir us all to demand an end to gratuitous violence and brutality. Law enforcement officials cannot place themselves above the law that they are sworn to defend. It was sickening to see the beating that was rendered, and there's no way, no way in my view, to explain that away. It was outrageous. Time, 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 a time to heal. Thank you all very much. Thank you.